What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video, I'm gonna cover all of the different purities of silver. So some of the big ones are 35%, 40%, 50%, 80%, 90%. Then of course we have sterling silver, Britannia silver, three nines fine, and four nines fine silver. So we're gonna cover all of those and more. Let's do it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, then subscribe to my channel. This video is talking about all of the different purities of silver. So there's so many different purities of silver. Uh, I'm going to cover at least all the ones that I'm aware of, all of the big ones, and a couple of the lesser well-known ones. So I'm gonna talk about how it's valued, how to buy it and sell it, different things like that as we touch on different purities. Um, so let's just start with probably the biggest one and the most well-known purity of silver, and that is pure silver. Oh my goodness. So what is pure silver? Pure silver is three nines fine silver. So if we're talking investment grade silver, it needs to be refined to three nines fine. And this is probably the most common, most well-known type of silver as far as investing in or purchasing. So right here at the bottom of this coin here, you can see it says 999 fine silver. So that's three nines fine silver. Uh, we've got another one here. This is a uh, Libertad from Mexico. And you can see right there, lay 999 right at the bottom. So that's three nines fine silver. Um, we have a Britannia here. This is a modern Britannia 2018. And this one is also three nines fine silver. You can see that right there, three nines. And you have the American Silver Eagle, one of the most popular, if not the most popular silver bullion coin in the world. And it says one ounce of fine silver right on it. So it doesn't even say 99.9 silver. It just says fine silver, and we know that to be pure silver. So if you're buying and selling silver bullion, it's most likely gonna come in three nines fine. There are some pieces that are offered in four nines fine or 90% or sterling, but for the most part, the vast majority of modern bullion pieces will be 99.9% .9 silver. So this is a one ounce coin of 99.9% .9 silver, and it's considered to be pure silver and investment grade silver. So that's the most common you're gonna run into. That's just called pure silver, silver, three nines fine silver. Uh, so that is valued at the spot price of silver, and different pieces will have a little bit of a premium over spot. It just depends on what type of bullion piece it is. So that's three nines fine. Now, probably almost as common now, but well, not nearly as much, is four nines fine silver. What does four nines fine silver mean? That just means the silver was refined more than three nines fine. So let me give you a couple examples here. We have the Canadian maple leaf from the Royal Canadian Mint. And you can see right there on the side, it says four nines fine silver, 99.99% .99 silver. So some people think that this has more silver in it than the three nines fine silver coins, and that's absolutely incorrect. That just means that this was refined more. So this is one ounce of silver. These are also one ounce of silver. So uh, to give you a little bit of a comparison, the American Silver Eagle is 99.93% silver, but it has a full ounce of silver in it. So that means the 0.07% that isn't silver in this is copper. The Canadian silver maple leaf is 99.99% silver. The 0.01% of silver uh, of uh, material in this that isn't silver is most likely copper as well. So they both contain a full ounce of silver. This one is refined a little bit more. Now, four nines fine silver is considered medical grade silver. So if you go to the doctor with a burn and they put silver nitrate on it, it's probably gonna be four nines fine silver. Um, so that it's 
just as great for buying and investment pieces. Um, here's a kookaburra from the Perth Mint. Last year they started making their pieces in four nines fine silver. You can see that at the bottom. Um, here's a, another one from the Perth Mint. It's a 2019 kangaroo. Four nines fine silver. You can see that at the bottom. I'll show you one more here. It is the Somali elephant and it is also four nines fine silver. So that just means that this was refined more. That doesn't mean that this is more valuable or has more silver in it than the pure silver. It just means that it was refined more. Now I do wanna show you one other piece of silver here. This is a three nines fine piece, but it is from the Perth Mint. And um, this is a really cool one. I just haven't shown this in a while. It's uh, the Kookaburra from 1990. That was the first year of the Kookaburras. Really, really cool and it is three nines fine. That was before the Perth Mint started refining them more to the four nines fine. So I gotta show that one off every now and again, but very cool. Okay, so there's a ton of other types of silver we need to talk about here. So let's get through these uh, through some of these pretty quick. So what is Britannia silver? Now you might hear the term Britannia silver or uh, you might have seen it, but what it is, I actually don't have any pieces that are Britannia silver, but that is 95 0.84% silver. So that was started in Great Britain in 1697. And I think they, the reason they did it was they want it to be more refined than sterling silver. Um, so they developed the Britannia silver standard at 95.84. And there was a lot of things that were made over in Great Britain uh, that were made out of Britannia silver. So if you see or hear that term, that means 95.84% silver. But I don't have any pieces that are that, so I just needed to include that in this video because it is a very common percentage of silver. Okay, so let's get to sterling silver. Now, sterling silver is probably one of the top types of silver that people ask me about or people don't know about. Uh, it is 92.5% silver. So I have a couple pieces right here that are sterling. This is a sterling silver ring. I'll show you uh, the inside here where it's actually stamped. So you can see right there on the bottom, 90, there's a little nine, two and a five, 92.5% silver. So if anything is stamped 925, that is sterling. Now this knife here, I don't believe is stamped sterling anywhere, but um, the, the person that sent this to me, it actually says stainless right there. So that's interesting. But I think maybe it's the handle that is sterling. I'll have to double check on this one. But the person that sent it to me said it was sterling, so I just brought it out for this video, but now I'm thinking it actually might not be. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but there are a lot of different ways to tell if it's sterling or not. This one here is stamped stainless, so I'm actually not sure. So I'll do some more research on that. But there is I, the reason I brought it out was there is a lot of silverware that is sterling silver. Uh, that was very, very common. So you can find uh, silverware, you can find like little teacups and mugs and things that were made out of sterling silver um, or even spoons and lots of other crazy scoops and stuff. So there was a whole bunch of things that were made out of sterling silver for a very long time because the price of silver was lower than it is today. And um, those are all 925 silver. So if it says 925, if it's stamped that anywhere, then it's most likely sterling and the rest is copper. So um, the reason they put copper in them was to make them more sturdy, more durable, right? Than just pure silver, because pure silver you can bend and manipulate, but uh, copper is a little harder to um, uh, actually bend and whatnot. So uh, sterling silver was very cop um, prevalent for a long time and it's valued at 92.5% of the spot price of silver generally. So if you have a lot of sterling silver items, you could probably take them down to a refiner and sell it to them for uh, quite a bit of money. So let's say the spot price of silver is 20 bucks. You just times that by 0.925. You figure out how much your stuff weighs. Bada bing, bada boom, that's how much you got. They'll probably pay you a little bit under that, but uh, that's what sterling silver is and how it's valued, bought and sold for. And you can find it at garage sales and stuff like that too. So I did want to mention that. You can actually make some money buying sterling silver and reselling it. Okay, let's get to the other types of silver because there's a lot more types of silver I still got to talk about in this video. 
So what is 90% silver? 90% silver is constitutional silver or junk silver. So let me show you some pieces here. Now this is US currency that is pre-1965, and that's dimes, quarters, half dollars, and dollars. So this quarter right here is 1957. This is 90% silver. This little mercury dime here, uh, what is that? 1941, that's 90% silver. This barber half dollar, 1906, that is also 90% silver. Okay, so as far as buying and selling 90% silver, it's valued near the spot price of silver. So to get to an ounce in 90%, it would actually be a dollar forty face value. So 14 silver dimes would get you there. Let me show you the mercury dime I was holding before. This is a Roosevelt. So if you had 14 silver dimes, that would be about an ounce of silver. And you would probably be able to sell that for almost the spot price of silver. And you could probably buy that for a little bit over the spot price of silver. So that's buying and selling 90% uh, silver in a nutshell. I also have a Balboa here from Panama, which is 90% silver. Pretty cool. It actually says it right here. It says lay 0900. I don't know if you can see that. You can just kind of barely see that there. So this is 90% silver. That's a pretty cool world coin. I do have a Morgan dollar here, which is 90% silver. It's from 1881. And I do want to mention that the uh, commemorative pieces, uh, the commemorative dollars from the United States of America up until this year were also 90% silver. So I've got a uh, Benjamin Franklin right here. It's a proof. And that is 90% silver as well. That's from 2006. So 90% silver, very common type of silver, especially in US currency. And uh, really, really cool stuff. I love buying junk silver or 90%. So the rest of the percentages of silver that are under 90% are for the most part bought and sold for their silver weight. So let me give you an example. Let's say you had something that was 50% silver uh, and then 50% copper, nickel, or whatever it is. However much it weighs, just take half of that and then that's its silver weight and that's what it would be valued at. So let me talk about some of the other percentages of silver that are lower percentages of silver. Um, a very common one is 80%. The uh, Canadian uh, currency was 80% silver for their quarters and whatnot. Uh, I think up until 1964 as well. Someone can correct me in the comments if I'm off on that. But this is a Canadian quarter here. And what's the year? Let's see, 1952. So this is 80% silver. <clears throat> I do have a piece from Australia that's 50, I'm sorry, 80%. It's pretty cool, it's a 50 cent coin. So there you go, there's one from Australia that's 80% silver. So a lot of world coins will have different percentages. Here's some coins from the United States uh, and uh, Phil Philippines. These are 75% silver. Very uh, interesting and cool. So the way to figure out what percentage of silver older coins are is I just Google it. That's the easiest way I know how to figure that out. Um, I do have a dime here from Canada that is 50% silver. It's from uh, 1968. Uh, in 1968, they were some of them were silver, some of them were not. And the way to tell <clears throat> is just take a strong magnet and if it's attracted to it, then it's silver. I'm sorry, then it's uh, uh, not silver, it's nickel. If it's not attracted to it, then it is silver. So that's kind of cool, little way to tell there. So that's 50% silver, pretty sweet. Then we got 40% uh, silver. The most common thing that's 40% is the Kennedy half dollars that were made from 1965 to 1970. So these are US currency, pretty sweet. You can actually find these coin roll hunting still. Uh, but what's this first one here? 1966, so 40 percenter. And this one here, uh, let's see, that's 1967, 40 percenter. So these are 40 percent silver. 
Now, there is a website called Coinflation. I would highly recommend checking out that website because it has all of the different coins and their percentage of silver and then what their current value is based off the spot price. So really cool website, definitely check that out. Uh, but these 40 percenters are pretty sweet. I love the 40% uh, silver Kennedys. Really, really cool, one of my favorites. <clears throat> and then we have another very, very common percentage of silver is the 35% war nickels. I have made video uh, a video anyway on these in the past. So these are from 1942 to 1945, but the way to tell if they're silver, the easiest way to tell, is flip it over, and if it has any letter up here above the uh, Monticello, then it is 35% silver. So this one has a D, it was the Denver Mint, um, and it's 35% silver, so very cool. This is valued at its weight in silver, so pretty sweet. Um, and then I do have one that's actually less. I have one that's 10% silver. Um, I gotta break this out and show it every now and again. This was actually uh, a gift from a uh, silver bean counter. So that's pretty cool. It's from Mexico and it's only 10% silver. So pretty sweet little piece. I'm not sure how much it's worth. Maybe like a buck, something like that. But uh, you can figure out, you know, how much it weighs and then take 10% of that and that's its value in silver. So really cool. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but this uh, Balboa, this was a gift from Yankee Stacking. So lots of cool stuff. This was a gift too from someone in Australia. Lots of things here are actually gifts from other people. Such a great community, you know, people sending me this awesome stuff. I love this community here on YouTube, but... Uh, anyway, so those were the main percentages of silver. If you have a coin, if you're not sure if it's silver or not, the best thing I would do uh, would be just to Google it and see if it has any silver in it at all because it could be worth some money. I mean, silver is fairly valuable. Right now, the spot price of silver is around $18.20, uh, something like that, right around um, when I'm shooting this video. It's uh, September uh, 13th, so... Yeah, it just, uh, you know, this price of silver goes up and down, but over time, it generally it goes up. So if you have things that are silver, then the value of them will probably go up over time. So I hope I was able to answer any questions people had about different percentages of silver, different purities. Um, I covered pretty much all the big ones. Like I said, the war nickels, 35%. Those are very common. The Kennedy half dollars. 40%. If you have any of these things and you want to know how much they're worth, go to that Coinflation website. I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, and then 80% silver, like Canadian, 80% silver, very common. 90% silver, junk silver, Morgan dollars, peace dollars, and then the half dollars, quarters, and dimes pre-1965. Those are very common, very, very popular. Sterling silver is 0.925, then you got pure silver, 3.9's fine, and then 4.9's fine, which is also pure silver, it's just refined a little bit more. So that was the video. Let me know if you have any questions, just put them in the uh, comment section down below. I'll try to answer them all. I want to say a massive thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next one. Silver Dragons, out.